What's up? My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another optimization guide. In this video, we'll step around the glaring issues with Saints Row 2022 and instead talk about getting the best possible FPS and performance out of this game. So let's start off by saying this video is not going to go at all into optimizing Windows. If you'd like, in the description down below, there's a Windows 10, Windows 11 and NVIDIA optimization guides to go with them to get the most performance out of your PC. Assuming that you've already done everything you can in that regard, this video is just going to touch on the in-game graphic settings, so I don't repeat myself too much. Obviously, the best thing that you can possibly do is make sure you have as little as possible running in the background. If you have things eating away at your graphics card like Discord with multiple streams in it, hardware acceleration, etc., you may want to turn those off or close them whenever you're playing any kind of game you want really good performance out of. With as little running as possible, let's go ahead and fire up Saints Row and see just what we can get out of this game. They were kind enough to give me a press key, so hey, I'm here showing it. I'll simply launch up the game and the optimization starts right off the bat in the main launcher. When we get presented with this, simply choose Vulcan for the best possible FPS. The only reason you'd want to choose DirectX 11 or 12 is if you have a weaker CPU. Vulcan uses a lot more of your CPU to give you better performance so we'll utilize more of your PC. If you have a weaker processor or a graphics card you know does better with DirectX, choose DirectX 11. You don't want to choose 12 unless you specifically want ray traced shadows and things like that. Those will tear away at your performance, but they can make a really minuscule difference in how the game looks. So for me, I'll be choosing Vulcan. On the main menu over here, head across to Options and we'll head into Display. Inside of here, there's not really much you'll want to do other than disable VSync completely unless you're getting screen tearing where the top half and the bottom half of your screen don't match. HDR doesn't have too much of an impact, but it can have a huge graphic impact if you have an HDR monitor. If you don't have an HDR screen, you more than likely won't be able to turn this on or off or maybe even see this option in the first place. Field of view, the higher this is, usually the lower your FPS goes, but it's definitely something you'll want to play around with, especially if you like higher field of views. Maybe one tens a bit much. I usually set it around 80 or so field of view. This is definitely much more of a user preference thing. I'd much rather take a more comfortable game over one that makes me feel like I'm sitting far too close just so I can get more FPS. Then at display mode, you should get better performance out of full screen, though in newer versions of Windows like Windows 11, you may not notice a difference between full screen and windowed borderless. So for me, I'll be leaving this on windowed borderless. If you choose to mess around with full screen, make sure that the resolution matches the resolution of your display or is at least a supported resolution so everything's nice, crisp and clean. So I'll leave it at windowed borderless in my case and I'll head across to graphics quality preset. You can crank this up to ultra if you're running anything above a 1080 or a 1080 Ti, and you can customize things in advanced display options, though of course you can drop this down if you're losing a ton of FPS. Everything else here is pretty much user preference. I definitely turn off motion blur as it can make some people feel sick. Anyways, advanced display options. Inside of here, change the FPS cap to whatever your monitor is, or of course, just uncapped. Anti-aliasing can take away some performance, and usually I'd recommend turning this off so nothing's blurry, though you may notice jagged edges. If you hate jagged edges, turn this on. FXAA may be a bit blurry, you may wanna leave this on TSSAA, though it does have a larger performance impact. Now, everything else here doesn't really have too much of an impact. There's only two main options that do. That is shadow quality. Simply dropping this from ultra to high or even medium makes a huge performance impact. This is probably the most effective one to go ahead and lower. Then further down this list, we also have screen space reflections. By dropping this from high to just medium, you'll notice a relatively large performance gain as well. Other than that, there's not too much else here. If you're playing it in DirectX 12 mode, you may notice some ray tracing options. Obviously, if you have those on, you'll be losing a ton of FPS, as RTX is just something that causes you to really lose FPS. With those out of the way, nothing else here will give you too much of a performance difference, other than maybe water quality in certain scenes. Post-processing when everything's exploding and there's tons of things happening. Depth of field is user preference. I'd usually leave this on off just so I don't feel like I need glasses. Effect quality, once again, explosions and things like that. Very situational. Vehicle shading. 
If you see huge FPS drops in the scenes with traffic, city streets, etc., this is something you can drop down from high to just low. And everything else here is sort of in between. Of course, the more you drop your settings, the more FPS you'll be getting in most cases, though where we are currently, you should see a huge performance increase that should make the game much more bearable to play in regards to FPS. As for everything else, well, that's up to you and your experience. Simply head back, click apply, and when we're done with that, there's nothing else we really need to do to optimize the game. Quite literally, everything else is user preference. If you have a surround sound setup, of course, change the audio mix to something that matches your setup. You can turn off licensed music if you're a streamer or a YouTuber, and even mute it entirely. And besides that, just hop into the game and carry on playing as you would usually. While there isn't a built-in FPS counter as far as I know, you can open up something like MSI Afterburner or River Tuner and capture FPS graphs and values through there. When you do so, you will need to relaunch the game. And just like that, you'll have an FPS counter. Of course, if you've configured it, you can make it look pretty as well. So jumping all the way up to 160 FPS from about 120, even in the intro scene such as this, there's a great improvement of ready. So anyways, that's really about it for this quick video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.